Okay, in this video we're going to talk about domain, range, discrete data, continuous data, the basics on all of those things. So when we're analyzing a problem situation, and this video is on an Algebra 1 level, so uh, we will be discussing domain and range, for example, in more detail later on, but in the first part of Algebra 1, when we're analyzing problem situations, we want to be able to list and identify the domain and range for both the problem situation and the function itself that we identify that best fits the data. And then we want to be able to determine if the data is discrete or continuous. So domain and range are related together and then discrete and continuous go together. So I don't want you to get confused and think that all four of these things always go together at the same time. But in this case, um, Again, domain and range go together, and discrete and continuous go together. So let's start with domain and range. So the way we can remember that, that domain is our x, our x values and range is our y values is like this. You want to get this picture. My printer's going off in the background, if you hear that. Sorry about that. And let me uh, let me undo this here. Let me do it down like this. This picture right here, I want you to get this picture in your mind. Domain is our X's like this. X's go left and right. And our range is our Y's, which goes up and down. Okay, so if you remember this picture like this, domain is our x's, goes left and right, range is our y's, goes up and down. Let's put a coordinate plane in here, right beside it, so we can remember what that is. We've got our x-axis that goes left and right, that's our domain. Our, range, our y values go up and down, that's our range. Domain with x's, range with y's. One other way that you can keep that straight is with alphabetical order. Sometimes in mathematics and trying to remember things, alphabetical order will work. In this case it does. So, for example, D for domain comes before R for range and X comes before Y in the alphabet. So D for range and then X and Y. So D comes before R, those are over here on the left, and then X comes before Y. So alphabetical order works here. So these two go together, these two go together. So whichever way will work for you to help you remember, uh, now you can always keep domain and range straight. So that is as deep of a level as we are going to look at for the domain and range at this point, but I just want to help you keep that straight. All right, I'm going to erase this now, and we're going to look at um, the concept of continuous and discrete data. All right, so now that that's gone, let's look look at discrete and continuous. One way that we can look at this is if I put up some uh, numbers here. So let's say that our problem situation and in our independent variable x that we are talking about uh, number of people for example. So let's look like look at number of people as an example. Okay, and our x values go from 1, then 2, then 3, 4, 5, 6, and then etc. after that. Okay, so we're talking about number of people here. This would be a situation that is discrete because discrete means that our domains, our domain values skip from one to the next. So we go. We can have one person, and then two, and then three, and then four, and then five, 
and then 6. We can't have half a person, so there's nothing in between 1 and 2. We immediately jump from 1 to 2, then from 2 to 3, then from 3 to 4 people, 4 to 5 people, 5 to 6 people. Okay, so number of people is an example of discrete. Okay, so I'm going to draw an arrow down here. That's what this means. Uh, let's look at another example because I don't want you to get confused and think that decimals can't be included in a discrete situation. In this case, we're talking number of people, so it's one, then two, then three. Generally, when you're talking of, about a quantity of some tangible object uh, or people, so for example, if we were calculating the number of calculators in our math classroom we would have we would count one and then two and then three and then four we wouldn't say we have one and a half calculators or at least uh, we hope we don't have half a calculator but it wouldn't be reasonable to assume we would have anything but one and then two and then three so that would be discrete data another example of discrete data where we can have some um, decimals involved let's say we're talking about the price price of fountain drinks so let's say you're going in to buy coke or dr pepper and you're you're getting a fountain uh, drink so uh, where you uh, fill it up yourself so price of fountain drinks all right based on size of course and let's say that our uh, small drink small drink was a dollar twenty and then our medium drink was a dollar eighty seven okay and large was two dollars and all right, I just had to pause the video there so let me get back on track my son came through so had to pause it a second okay so he is four years old by the way and a four-year-old and trying to make a video don't go together okay so anyway we were talking about price of fountain drinks all right a small drink was a dollar twenty a medium drink dollar eighty seven a large is a dollar ninety eight and then the extra large drink I'll just put XL is two dollars twelve cents all right so at first uh, and this is often difficult a difficult concept for students to get so I wanted to show you some examples here so in this case is this discrete or continuous data well in this case it is actually discrete data even though we have some decimals involved because you have a small and then you go you skip all the way to a medium and then you skip all the way to a large and then you skip all the way to an extra large so there's nothing in between here there's nothing in between nothing in between nothing in between here we don't have a, a drink that costs a dollar twenty one or a dollar twenty two a dollar twenty three etc it's a dollar twenty or the next size up is all the way at a dollar 87 we skip all the way to those different levels all right so that that is a discrete data this is discrete all of this right here draw an arrow these are discrete situations okay so now let's look I'll erase all that and we'll look at continuous situations hope that helps explain that concept of discrete data and the reason we're making this video is so that we can get the basics down and then we can start applying them to all of our problem situations that we're doing in class alright so now we're going to talk about continuous what kind of data might be continuous so for example if we're talking about uh, if we were going to measure the distance uh, from our classroom uh, to the cafeteria so uh, a distance of any kind we're gonna measure that distance in that case we will definitely be continuous because when we are traveling that distance so let's say we're we're plotting our path here 
and we're walking let's say our classroom is here so I'll abbreviate classroom cafeteria is over here and we're going to walk between those two let me label this I'm just gonna abbreviate again cafeteria so we're going to walk from our classroom and we gotta go through a couple of hallways and down to our classroom so we're measuring this distance if we were measuring that distance it would definitely be continuous why because regardless of whether we're walking like we're supposed to or a person runs hops skips whatever they are still traveling every decimal inch of that distance Let, let's say it's 125 feet let's just say it was 125 feet total distance there is no way that we can warp from a zero feet distance out here to say 75 feet in distance we're not going to just magically move that distance in zero time right we're going to have to travel all of this path and when we're calculating that distance it will be continuous because again when you're all the way down to an infinite decimal place uh, you're traveling every bit of that distance that would be continuous data often an, another example of continuous data would be uh, time for example so if you're um, trying to time yourself in a race for example let's say you're running track and you've got to, you're running the hundred meters 100 meter race, 100 meter race. Your time, let's say you're really fast, uh, I don't know, let's say it's, uh, you run a 10.72 second hundred. All right, 10.72 second hundred. And maybe that's fast for you, maybe it's not, but anyway, as an example, 10.72. As you were traveling that, you're, the time, as you were being timed, I should say, you covered everything from zero is way over here and 10.72 seconds. 10.72 seconds is over here. Let's say. So between, and we'll put up a little number line here, between zero and 10.72 seconds out here, you covered every that time I should say that time was included every bit of this time every decimal was included our stopwatch might say 10.72 but at some point the time say right in here was at 5.13576 etc 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 decimal places seconds our stopwatch may will not read uh, to that precision but we still actually covered that in time that time did go by in uh, very small decimals of seconds okay so that is a situation that is continuous we don't skip in time from zero to one second to two seconds or from one and a half seconds directly to two and a half seconds we are covering that when we are uh, watching time it is uh, continuous in nature it is infinite between uh, in decimal places between your starting and ending point okay I hope that helps make sense and clarifies your uh, domain range discrete and continuous so that you can apply that to our problem situations